Now we're building a B18C Type R engine. It has a P7300 piston, so it's a JDM, unlike the USDM counterpart that has slightly lower compression. We'll talk about the ring gaps, how we orient the ring clocking sequence, which is really important. And of course, the block is freshly honed and decked, and even the crankshaft got checked up and everything was within spec, so we did the light micro polishing and of, all, of course even the girdle is all cleaned up we'll be using oem main bearings and acl race rod bearings a, a little mishap on the parts here as the owner sent it to us so we'll tell you what not to do and what to do so this is going to be definitely an interesting one for you guys so let's go <laughs> Okay, the story of this B18C Type R block is that the owner wanted us to build the block for him, but unfortunately he decided to disassemble the pistons and I told him not to do that because we would like to disassemble it our own. This way we can label it properly, identify all the problems and not cause any mishaps. And we'll talk about the damages later. But now we got the pistons cleaned up and ready, has OEM piston rings. And of course, luckily the crank checked out fine. So it got micro polished lightly. This way it's gonna turn really good. Now it's gonna be ready. Now here's the main girdle. We got the OEM main bearings installed on the block. And yes, we'll be running ACL race rod bearings. And here it is. All clears is checked out good. We shot for 0.0016 on the mains and so th this way we would run 0 0.0018 on the rod bearings the acl rod bearings so now okay let's install the crank okay so we wipe the main bearings good get free from dust now we assembly lube sorry right now thrust washer groove side out we'll always remember that all right now assembly lube again and then the mains all right got hand tight it keep it snug this way it's ready for step one come on let's go let's go all right okay there okay now step one is 22 feet pounds torque all right so we're not really gonna time lapse this because it's gonna be you know not really long but you know hopefully you guys don't get bored all right making sound is really addicting okay now let's go time lapse this a bit all right sorry about that Okay, now last two on the center main. Okay, now here on the one and the number five main, all right? Now here, step two and the final step is 49 feet pounds torque on the center main. The two, three, and four main girdle or the center, all right? The clicking is louder now. Yep, yep, okay. Yes. Okay, now one in five is gonna be 56 feet pounds torque. It's gonna be higher. You can hear it louder now. There. All right, almost done. One more. Okay, now this has assembly loop, so it's supposed to turn a bit heavier, but let's see how it is. Oh, nice. It turns freely or lightly, even with just my hands. Oh, this is going to be really, really good. This is how we like it. Yes. The crank is good and straight. All right. So we turn this now. Right there. Wipe that off. Well, no, wait. Let's prepare for the ring gaps. Let's check the ring gaps first. All right. Let me get the pistons and then, all right, let's go, let's go. All right. Here we are now. We're going to test fit the piston rings. In order one two three four we check this part here this is about the level of top dead center and then we turn it on to the nine o'clock yes so it fits and the ring gaps here we got was 0 0.018 on the top ring so some people were gonna say that's a little too loose sure but the bar sh showed to be straight so we honed it it's pretty good and that's gonna be fine now the second ring we're gonna you know gap it accordingly and if you remember this this had 0 0.016 on the top ring it still made 186 wheel horsepower for just a b16 and itr cams that's pretty strong and of course that an old build that we did this had 0 0.020 on the top ring it didn't smoke and still 
showed way, way over 300 PSI on the compression test. So that's pretty good, right? Unfortunately, that never got to dyno. So now, anyways, on to the ring clocking sequence. Of course, you can follow the OEM, but this is how we do it. And of course, either way is going to work. We've been doing this for years. Okay, now here, let me mark it with a marker just so you guys can see it. Okay, here. Top ring is, goes here around, around 2 o'clock or 2.30, all right? And then second ring is on the opposite side of that around 10 or 11 a.m. or 11 o'clock, sorry, sorry. This way, they don't accidentally serve next to each other. And then the, the oil separator or the oil spacer is just down here. And then the, oh, not spacer, sorry, separator. And the end of the oil spacer or oil control ring is on nine o'clock and three o'clock. This way, when you use the ring compressor, there is no way they will overlap the gap. They'll be far apart. The OEM one is good, but there's a bit of risk there because they're a little bit closer to each other. So to make sure it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna you know be be the risk. And now here, let me talk about the damage because they, they disassembled the pistons and then they, they stored it whatever or however. You see this part on the ring lands. There's dents. That's definitely not a running damage. That's storage damage or damage during storage. And the thing, the reason why I talk about this is because now we had to carefully file that section because it makes the piston rings tight there. It doesn't really turn or whatnot. So that's not good. So here's number one and also number actually all pistons have this. So we had it it took a lot of time for, to care for carefully file it. You can see here look that's like that's probably like the pistons was just stored at the trunk and let it bounce everywhere let me fix the lighting sorry so you can see better so when you install the piston rings it kind of binds up there so you know we had to fight it carefully just to make sure it spins good now it's all good but this is why we don't really like or want when the owner disassembles the engine without you know, without the sequence that we do. And actually, to be honest, we've turned down a few builds because they did that. So we would rather not go through that much trouble. Okay, now here, the ACL rod bearings are installed. Now it's gonna be good. It's all ready. And now this, the good thing is the stock rod bearings are still here. So I wanna show you something here, guys. Here's the stock rod bearings. As you can see, that's, you know, it's easy to say this, probably worn out or wear damage, but when you think about it, the oiling oiling hole on the rod journals at the center, and this is how it is on the center. So this has been running with dirty oil. That's why it's making that wear. And the thing is, locally, especially locally, people should understand that, you know, even if you use a Motul or Amsoil, something good of an oil, you know, don't make don't extend it to like five months or six months just because it's fully synthetic no because dirt will still be there and you can't ensure that it's going to be running clean you know if you run with no filter or ram air that's going to get the oil dirty and i'm sure even the motor engineers if you ask them they will say yeah the synthetic min formula makes the oil last longer right but if you tell them what if on the first month the oil gets dirty of course, they'll say, change the oil right away, right? So don't rely on, just because it can last for five months, use it for five months. No, make sure the oil is clean. And if you're not sure it's clean, change the oil right away. It helps preserve the life of the engine. And plus, you know, you don't, you wouldn't want to be told or hear, like, you know, people say, yeah, dude has a type R, but can't even afford to change his oil. That's embarrassing, right? So make sure it's always clean. Now let's prep to install these pistons. Let's go, let's go. Okay, now we do the rod journals, wipe it, everything's good. Okay, piston number one, and then the rod caps, we loop it well. Yes, and we hand tight the rod balls. This way it's snug and good. So when we turn it for number two, it's gonna be ready. All right, now number two, snug. Oh, I hit my head there, understand, sorry about that. And then here, 
and that one we didn't we we cut the recording there because I dropped the knot on the engine, so I had to turn it so just so that the knot rod knot would drop in or drop out. Sorry. Okay, here now is piston number four, the last one. Yes, now we put the rod cap, the last one there. Keep it hand tight and snug. And then we loosen everything so that now we can torque it to 33 feet pounds torque because this is an ITR. All right, there you go. Okay, so now, you know, if it's a BCT, it's just a 30. But also, one thing to note here is that if you're running an ERP rod bolt or aftermarket rods, you have to stretch it. And we have a video of it here. We did it, uh, I think, two years ago. So you can check on that. It's just going to be good over here. I mean, link will be in the description below. So don't worry about that. You can check it out after this video. All right. And then also in the previous video, backwards tuning or backwards tuner did comment this. And that's be really cool because he's doing a GSR hedge engine. I mean, he's still collecting parts for it. So hopefully he can check this out because he is this one. We did a B18C way, way back around four or five years ago. And this had just only P30 D16 pistons and Pro 1 cams. And this did over 200 wheel horsepower. So this is something that he must check out. I'm pretty sure he's going to enjoy this one and give you more ideas. All right. So now let's continue. And I'll pin a comment to the link to this video just for backwards shooter. All right. So let's go. So my colleague is now prepping the oil pump because it's fully rebuilt and he's installing the brand new front main seal on it. So now it's here. And of course, the rear main seal also gets installed at the back side after this one. All right, there you go. All right. And then, you know, he starts putting the strainer and then the oil pickup. It's going to be all ready. We, we won't fully close this yet, but... You know, we're just going to get it ready like that. The oil pan, that's gonna, not going to get dust. So now you can hear it with all brand new piston rings and freshly honed. Let's see. Oh, yes. This is going to be really, really good. Yep. So good right here. And it turns freely. No obstruction or no, you know, no hiccups or no binding. So that's really good. Really important. Okay, wait. Let me get the phone. Show you guys. This one here, this part here is going to be interesting for find the right beat because maybe we turn the piston or turn the crank, the new oil seal on the front and the rear, of course, but we can't really see that. So now there, now this one is for find the right beat. We're going to turn the crank, get the piston number one. Yes, so you can see the hone marks is really retaining the oil onto the sleeve. So that's really good. Yes. So now the bottom end is done and finished. Since the owner wanted us to build just a bottom end, just a block and straight from OEM, here it is, all stock pistons with a, well, you know, a JDM type R, so it's P7300. This is gonna be good. It'll have slightly more compression than the USDM counterpart, but this is gonna be fun because I know the owner has Brian Crower Stage 2 cam, so this is gonna rip really, really good. It's gonna be fun. And of course, for anything else, for new stuff, and of course, subscribe, you can also just click it here for new ones.